There's more on the details of here, part here. one coming forward. Let's thank hear you. something from you. Kevin Haig. Chair, it's a pleasure to take a call, um, and in particular to follow up on the contribution from Paul Goldsmith, because uh, he did state, and he's the first government member to speak in this debate, uh, that this is a bill intended to improve the health of New Zealanders. And that has been one of the topics that, that's, that's, been, uh, that's been debated in, in, th in this stage of the bill, but also in the second reading uh, debate that we held earlier this week. I think it's, it's interesting, isn't it, Mr Chair, that um, there, there does seem to be general support from the House for this bill, uh, and I think all parties will be voting for it. I'm not, I'm not sure about New Zealand First, but, but all, all other parties certainly be voting for it. <laughs> have, to, have to wait for someone to come back, will we? Uh, <laughs> and um, the, uh, but n despite, despite the general support for the bill, nonetheless, uh, there are many suggestions about improvements to the bill um, that, uh, that have been uh, canvassed both in the debate but also by the select committee um, and by many of the, many of the submitters. And it's, um, it's an unusual thing, it seems to me, Mr Chair, that in the select committee's report that it refers to amendments to the bill that it would have made um, had they been in scope. And I think so that's, that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because it suggests that there are further public policy measures that... Uh, we as a nation ought to be taking around uh, control of tobacco-related harm and that this bill does not do the things that we need it to do. Uh, Ian Lees Galloway has mentioned that it's, um, it's, uh, it's a better approach than has been used to uh, excise tax increases um, in the past and I, I would agree with that. I think it's a step forward. Uh, but given the opportunity that the bill presented it's unfortunate that it didn't go further. And I, I, I quote again from the letter to the New Zealand Medical Journal from um, Associate Professor Nick Wilson and, and George Thompson from the Otago School of Medicine um, from uh, earlier this week. And, and they very clearly raised the question that has been raised by several speakers um, over, the, over the debate uh, in this stage and, and earlier. Um, about what the purpose is of the bill. Uh, in fact, what they, what, they, what they say in their letter is, we suggest that Parliament makes it explicit in the, in the tobacco tax legislation that the primary purpose of the current bill is to reduce smoking so as to prevent harm to health and to prevent premature deaths rather than to increase government revenue. And also, they say, that that, that uh, purpose clause that they suggest uh, is, uh, should say that the bill is a key part of the government plans for achieving a smoke-free nation in 2025. So uh, placing into statute, in fact, uh, that goal and the linkage that Paul Goldsmith has mentioned tonight, um, if indeed that is the government's intention, that that is what this bill is about, then I invite the minister who's in the chair to, uh, to, to bring an SOP um, to, the, to the floor of the House uh, to, to add exactly that kind of purpose clause. It's been drafted for the government by the professors at Otago Medical School. And so I think, I think it's, it's uh, apparent, isn't it, that, um, it's apparent, isn't it, that, that why that confusion has arisen. Because, uh, be, because those who believe that the bill uh, is or ought to be about reducing smoking-related harm would then look at the options that were canvassed uh, by the various agencies uh, who were um, supporting the select committee on this bill uh, and note that the, the option that was selected for inclusion in the bill and that is reflected in the bill that's been reported back was the option that actually had the least positive impact on improving New Zealanders' health. So, Either, sir, there is some kind of goal confusion going on um, and one suspects that that may be the case and, and if that's the case, perhaps then, sir, a, a purpose clause along the line suggested by those Otago professors uh, would, would be helpful to everyone, to the public and to the government in being clear about what it was that they were trying to achieve. Um, 
or else there's, there's, there's something more insidious, and that's certainly the theory that Marion Street has, has, has. Mr. Chair, Kevin Haig. That's certainly the theory that, that, that we've heard espoused in, in the debate tonight. And the government is able to settle that point if they were to take up that suggestion about inserting a purpose clause. The, um, the, so the Select Committee uh, rejected the more aggressive measures uh, that, that would have had a more positive effect on health. Um, and, uh, and in doing so, they also make some further comment in, in their report to this House. Um, about the need, about in fact their doubt about whether the measures that were being passed into law would be adequate to meet that 2025 goal. Um, and they suggest that there, there should be some ongoing monitoring by the government uh, of progress towards that goal with a view to determining whether further measures are required. Uh, well, so again, the Minister and the Chair may or may not be in a position tonight to indicate what the monitoring regime is that the government intends to put in place to determine uh, whether or not progress is adequate towards that goal. And so, again, that would be a useful insertion into the bill from the government, the monitoring regime that it intends, intends to use to determine whether or not these measures are achieving, achieving the goal. There's certainly a lot of doubt about that point, Mr Chair, uh, was raised by virtually every submitter to the Select Committee uh, and certainly all of the experts. Uh, indeed, the, uh, the advice from officials themselves suggests that the measures in this bill will not be adequate to achieve that purpose. Um, so, certainly very keen to hear from the Minister about what that monitoring regime will be. And I also want to touch on one other point in relation to Part 1, and that's the matter of uh, duty-free tobacco concessions. And this is the issue that the Select Committee said that had it been in scope, they would have uh, recommended an amendment to the bill to, uh, to change these, the duty-free concessions. And I think what that, what that suggests, sir, is that the Select Committee's... The, the recommendation that the Select Committee does make, which is that the government needs to consider this matter, consider the consistency of the duty-free uh, concessions with that smoke-free uh, Aotearoa goal, um, clearly that's another point that we want to hear from the Minister on. What is it that the Government is going to do uh, to assess uh, that consistency? What is the legislative programme that we might expect um, to see to close that gap? Because, sir, I think the, the evidence is pretty clear. Uh, as New Zealanders uh, move through airports or otherwise access, access duty-free stores or duty-free supplies, that the availability of, of duty-free tobacco and tobacco products um, <laughs> is increasingly an anachronism in an environment where our strategy as a nation is to denormalise tobacco. Well, so the, the massive stands of cigarettes um, that we see in, in duty-free stores, I guess we, we don't see them now, but that we're used, used to seeing, um, actually are the, the, the epitome of the normalisation of that product. And so this is, uh, this is a point that doesn't, doesn't perhaps affect uh, very large numbers of people, but it is an important symbolic step towards that goal that the government has adopted of a smoke-free nation. And I look forward to the Minister's comments uh, from the Chair on exactly what it is that the Government will do to close that gap. Honourable Parakura Horomia. Mr Speaker, um, this is a tax grab. The Government needs...